Welcome to the Chosen Devotional, Day 8, Hope. Hope. I love that word, don't you? I think we all need some hope today. Let's look at Romans 5, verses 2 to 5. Romans is in the New Testament, was written by Paul. Chapter 5, Mandy, this is exciting. I'm excited for today. The title is Peace and Joy. I'll start with verse 1. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into this grace in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of the glory of God. Not only so, but we rejoice in our sufferings because we know that suffering produces perseverance. Perseverance, character, and character, hope. And hope does not disappoint us. Because God has poured out His love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit, whom He has given us. Those are some really encouraging words, aren't they? This is another one where there's like a reporter back in the Old Testament times, and this time the reporter's interviewing Elizabeth. So this is kind of fun. The reporter says, Elizabeth, tell me what was going through your mind when Zachariah returned from the temple and tried to relay Gabriel's news. Elizabeth, Well, needless to say, I was shocked that he was unable to speak. Something major had obviously happened, but I had no idea what or why. He couldn't tell me. So I ran to get the writing tablet. Reporter. And once you read it? Oh my, tears of joy streamed down my cheeks. How could this be? I was in total awe of God's goodness and favor on us. Your husband asked Gabriel the same question, except not exactly from a place of wonder and awe. Were you disappointed by Zachariah's initial disbelief? Elizabeth, Zachariah is a good man, a righteous man, but I know how hope deferred can make the heart sick. I was disappointed for him, but not in him. You still had hope? My desire was for a child, but my hope has always been in the Lord. You know, I think of all those times Zachariah and I prayed for a child during all of those years suffering barrenness not knowing that every detail of John's conception, birth, and life had already been planned. How did you respond to the news that your child would grow up to be the messenger who, in the strength of Elijah, would herald the arrival of the Messiah? I still marvel at how we used to read about the one calling out in the wilderness, years before we knew that that one would be our son. I dropped to my knees in awe of God's favor. I was so completely overwhelmed with joy and gratitude. For the first five months of my pregnancy, I remained in seclusion, relishing the miracle inside me and what it would mean for God's people. He chose me for this. He chose me. Why do you think it all happened the way it did? Clearly, John's life was fashioned to fulfill the promises God made through his holy prophets. But why me? Why did I get to be his mother? Only God knows. I imagine he wanted to make it extra clear that it was all him, that nothing is impossible with God. Our miraculous little family is proof. And since no one can deny that, we'll boast all the more in the hope of the glory of God. We were chosen. That's just so exciting to me, isn't it? I mean, here, all those years, she was crying and they were sad. And back then, if you couldn't have a baby, you were looked down on. So people were looking down on them. Their life was just sad. And all the time, God was just arranging all the details to fulfill a great promise that John the Baptist would be the one crying out in the wilderness, preparing the way of the Lord, making his way straight. All of those promises were fulfilled. And she's right. She was chosen, just like we all are. I'll read the prayer focus. God, today, we just want to be brave. And we want to ask you not to relieve us of the tough circumstances or shorten the long wait for answers that we might be enduring. But God, just to change our hearts through them. Just make us just stronger in our faith and just more reliance on you, Lord. And just know that you have a plan. And just like Elizabeth and Zachariah had to wait for years and years and years for their son to be born, that once he was born, Lord, he was the one that prepared the way for your son. So we know, Lord, that you have a plan for us. And we just ask you just to give us patience and hope while we wait. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm. Let's look at the moving forward questions. The first one is, what suffering have you experienced that produced perseverance? character, and hope? Well, a lot of different experiences. Um, 
you know, growing up and through college years, but I guess the biggest one would have been Todd's accident that he had where he shattered a vertebrae. And here's a picture of him in the hospital, in the ER, and then also the surgery that did repair his back. He actually was paralyzed um, for about a day and a half, and then they did the surgery, and actually miraculously after that surgery and all the rods in there, he was able to walk again after a bunch of rehab, of course. But looking back, I was calm through that situation because of all the prior things. So a lot of times God will give you small trials, and each one of those does produce perseverance, which in, then builds character and then gives you hope. So when you're in a trial right now, don't try to rush through it and don't think, oh God, just get me out of this trial because every trial you go through prepares you for the next one. And when that big one came, sure, I mean, there were days that I was depressed and angry and sad and cried, of course, but overall, our family got through it because we had been through smaller trials. And so just know that those smaller trials are building you up. What was the evidence of your spiritual growth? I think the evidence of our spiritual growth was that in that bigger trial, we just knew that God was going to get us through. We knew that God was going to be faithful. When he, you see him get you through small things, then when the big ones come, you have the faith big enough to know that, you know what? He handled it before. He's going to handle it again, and he's going to get you through. So every time you go through something, your faith does grow. And the last one, have you ever been brought to tears over God's goodness and favor? Describe the circumstances. Oh yes, many, many times. I mean, when we had two miscarriages and then finally had Rebecca, of course we were overjoyed. Then it took several years to have Joshua, but then he came. So lots of times, I mean, God has just been so faithful. He helped Todd, you know, not to die in his accident and he actually got him back to where he could be walking again, which is great. We've got this cute little fluff ball, you know, I mean, just lots of blessings in our lives just over and over again where God has been faithful and um, lots of tears of joy, a lot of happy tears. So we all have a role to play. Maybe I'm not going to be the mother of John the Baptist, obviously, but I am a mother to two kids and I have a role to play in their life and they have a role to play in this world telling other people also about Jesus. So my encouragement today for you is to be hopeful. And also, if you want to go back and read um, Romans 5, that was a great chapter to read. It might spur you on a little bit more to be hopeful. And just know that you are chosen. He has a job for you. And I hope you go out with a hopeful heart and do your job today. God bless you, and we'll see you tomorrow. You can get your own chosen devotional mailed right to your house, Season 1 or Season 2. They also have great Bible studies from Season 1 and Season 2. Simply go to thechosengifts.com to find all kinds of great chosen merchandise.